So intentions versus goal setting, which is the best for you to succeed in life? That's what this episode is going to be all about. I'm so thrilled that you are listening in to Untapped, which is all about how to live up to your potential. And this is a question that I've asked myself a lot. Last year, Josh and I developed this life planning tool called Life Pilot. And as a result, we've been really, really digging into the juicy research around goal setting, habits, intentions, and more. And so I wanted to share a lot of that in this episode with you. And a big part of my year is about learning and delving deeper into this. So I have spent hours today preparing for this episode, but really if I'm being honest with myself, I have spent years delving deep into the psychology around what makes us reach our potential, what makes us find a purpose in life and then really go after it. And also what distracts us from doing that? Like where do we go wrong? Where do we lose our patience? Where do we go off track? Where do we procrastinate and why? So some of that I'll be discussing in this episode and future upcoming episodes as I learn more, uncover more, experiment more, and really get results for clients and people through Life Pilot to be able to share with you more of our learnings. So the question of today is how do you combine intentions and goal setting to succeed in life? And I'm really mindful that we are almost at the end of January 2019. How the heck did that happen? And I guess the question I want you to ask yourself right now is how are those New Year goals and resolutions going for you? And I want you to be really honest because if you're like 92% of people who walk this earth, you won't have stuck to your resolutions if you set them. And that's likely because you set vague ones or you had unrealistic expectations like I'm going to become a celebrity game show host or I'm going to break a world record in gumboot throwing. I think I put that example in there because we have a little town in New Zealand called Tai Happy and gumboot throwing is their specialty and they actually measure it and have championship events. Anyway, wonderful expectations like that that seem ridiculous but so doable are typically, I think, a result of champagne <laughs> overtaking or just getting really high on this new year coming in and throwing everything else to abandon and going, yes, this year is going to be different. But there's another factor here that's likely led to you not succeeding, and that is that you probably don't have a plan to make these lofty goals or resolutions a reality. Am I right? That's where you need intentions to go along with your goals to ensure you'll actually succeed. So what is the difference between goals and intentions? Goals are focused on the future. They're about a destination or a specific achievement. So for example, I'm aiming to compete in the Kinlock sprint triathlon on February 10th in Taupo. And I've been training towards this for almost three months now, up to six days a week. So I damn well hope that I hit my goal time on the day. My big, hairy, audacious goal that I'm going to share with you eek, is to qualify to represent New Zealand at the World Champs in September this year. Now, when I signed up for that event, that wasn't my intention. It was just to compete in a sprint triathlon, train for it and get fit for it and enjoy it. But then I found out that if you actually got in the top 10, you might be able to qualify to represent New Zealand. And that was just like a bonus cherry on the top. Intentions are in the present moment. Intentions are lived each day. They're independent of reaching your goal or destination. They're about the inner relationship with yourself, if I'm being really honest. And what I know to be true is that the journey of getting my level of fitness up to speed pun intended, to be able to compete in this event has been the really rewarding part. Every day I've turned up with intention to make a little micro improvement in my run, my bike or my swim, no matter how tired I feel and I felt tired or what my last result was. And some of those have been like disappointing to me because I have high expectations. The actual event though, even though it matters, isn't going to replace all the hard work, commitment and dedication that I've put into my training since October. The real intention has been to get into peak health and maintain that for the rest of my life. So why does goal setting suck on its own? Well, I've always been an avid goal setter and for my most formative years, I used my competitive nature and my Gretchen Rubin would call upholder tendencies of always doing what I say I will to achieve my goals. And the thing is, once I'd achieved a big milestone, I was often left feeling pretty empty. 
Now, you may have experienced this for yourself. In fact, I'm 99% certain you have. And what I've noticed over the years is as I get older and thankfully wiser, it's that I was putting all my eggs into one basket and setting myself up for a letdown rather than focusing on the journey of continual improvement. I read an excellent article on Inc. by the author Wanda Thibodeau. I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. And it was called Why You Might Feel Empty After Reaching a Huge Goal and How to Move On. And in that article, she speaks to the fact that goals give you a sense of purpose, connection, and direction. But if all we focus on is working long and hard to reach this one monumental goal, when you finally hit it, all those links that you've created between yourself and your sense of worth disappear. So now you don't have anything to define yourself the way you did, and you have all this time on your hands that you don't know how to fill. And I felt like this after I won my regional body sculpting championship. It was something that I dedicated myself to for nine arduous months and lots of chicken and broccoli and twice a day in the gym training for this event. And when I finished, I won it. But I felt a severe lack of identity because I couldn't say I'm training for this body sculpting championship anymore. All I had was a bright, shiny trophy, some bling and a tub of protein powder but my quest to be the best had now passed and I didn't know what to do next. Now, Wanda notes that what adds to that is neuroscience kicking you in the face while you're down. That's literally what she said and I loved it because in short, your brain releases dopamine, a hormone associated with both motivation and happiness in anticipation of reward. That's why we get so excited about goals because dopamine kicks in and it gives us that little sense of excitement and we think, wow, imagine what it's going to be like when we actually hit this goal. And that's what keeps you working towards your goals, especially where each milestone you set towards achieving it gets hit. It gives you even more reason to keep going and a biological position to feel good. The problem is when you reach your goal, that release of dopamine drops and it's harder for you biochemically to have joy, which is why often you'll get there and you'll be like, huh, is that it? The other reason goal setting leaves you disappointed is that it moves you towards what you think you want and takes you out of enjoying the present moment, right? Am I right? Come on. Oh, I so wish I could hear you going, yes, Natalie, I've felt this before. So instead of being grateful for the here and now, you're left feeling like what you currently have isn't enough and that you have to strive harder to get the next big thing, which leads you to being stuck in an endless cycle of goal setting to fill the void. And that's exactly what I used to do. And don't get me wrong, like I achieved tons, but my happiness throughout the time of achieving that wasn't always there. It was always focused on this end goal of where I wanted to be rather than how I felt right now. Living your intentions, on the other hand, is much different than having a goal-oriented focus. That's because it allows you to focus on how you want to be in the moment. It's not about winning or losing, hitting or missing. It's about tuning in to your moment-to-moment focus. This means you live life by your values and what matters to you most, and that's a beautiful way to live. So how do you combine goal setting with daily intentions? Because they both absolutely have their place in your life. The key thing to understand that I now understand myself is that focusing on your intentions doesn't mean that you're giving up your goals. It actually means that you found a great partner to achieve your goals with. I actually like to think of intention as your personal trainer. It gives you the daily rhythm, motivation, and accountability you need to transform yourself. By being intentional, you'll enjoy the journey as much as the destination, and therefore you'll just bring more joy to everything you're doing. And that's a big focus for me this year is that I want to have joy in everything that I do. Otherwise, I'm not doing it right. Back to intentions. They really act as a reminder on how you want to show up in the world and live each day. And they give you the purpose to show up to meet your goals. That's why my partner Josh and I baked in intentionality into our life pilot tool and methodology. We'd both had enough life experience and exposure to all sorts of methods, strategies and frameworks to know that goals are devoid of joy unless they're backed by daily intention. And that's why when people join our Life Pilot 10 Day Challenge, we ask them to set no more than three goals or intentions each day, each week, month or quarter based on their chosen life categories like wealth, health, impact, relationships. And seriously, this takes some getting used to, but once you tune into it, it makes life planning way more enjoyable and sticky. And by sticky, I mean something that you are going to stick with, which is what we all want, right? to make it easy and turn it into a habit. 
So here's a real life example of intention supporting goals. If you'd looked at my weekly tab in my life pilot spreadsheet last week, you would have seen my work category goal, which was to finish first quarter of content editorial calendar. If you haven't heard me speak about this before, I love planning out my content editorial and marketing calendar well in advance so that I know when my podcasts are coming out, what the heck I'm going to be talking about, how that ties in with my vlogs and my blogs and my emails and promotions and all sorts of fun things. Anyway, so by Friday afternoon, I had smashed that If you'd looked at my weekly tab in my Life Pilot spreadsheet last week, my work category goal was this, finished first quarter of content editorial calendar. Now, if you know me well, you know that I love setting up my entire content calendar, often for the year, but at least three to six months ahead of time. So I can say, hey, I'm having these podcasts throughout the month, these vlogs, these blog posts, these emails, these Facebook lives, and these promotions. And I can look at it and go, oh, that's awesome. It all ties in. I know exactly what I need to be creating and when it's coming up and when it's being released. But it does take some time and planning. But then it just gives you so much more freedom and time back. Anyway, by Friday afternoon, I had smashed that weekly goal because when I planned out my week in advance, I had set working on my content calendar and brainstorming topics as one of my daily three actions on both Wednesday and Friday. So I didn't just hope that by our Sunday reflection time, when we go off to a cafe or we go on a walk together, we talk about our week, that it would have just magically happened and I'd be able to go, yeah, I rocked it. But I'd stated it in my daily actions and I'd scheduled it into my calendar so my intentions backed up and supported my weekly goal. Ta-da! Same with my triathlon training. Last week's health goal was plan, prepare and nail swim event. So I had a pretty big Well, not big, but it was an official event. There were hundreds of swimmers and I signed up to swim a kilometre in the ocean. And when I turned up on Sunday morning to these choppy ocean conditions at Oriental Bay in Wellington, I was, quite frankly, tempted not to compete. But I'd set several daily intentions throughout the week to be fully present at my swim trainings. And so that meant when I got to the start line, I knew that I was prepared. I was more than prepared for the event and I just needed to stop being a wuss and get in the water. And once I stopped swallowing water from the barrage of waves, I actually enjoyed it and I did a pretty good time. So how do you apply intentions to your life goals? Well, let's say you wanted to finally develop a meditation practice, which is what I've been working on this month. So you go with monthly intention for January is deepen my meditation practice to improve my appreciation of life. Then your weekly goal might be commit to doing at least four guided meditations. And your daily action then could be use the free Insights Timer app to do a guided meditation. Each morning, you'd look at your journal, your notebook, your whiteboard, or you'd come and join us for Life Pilot and you'd be looking at our spreadsheet tool. We've recorded this and you'd check your daily actions and then schedule in time to make them happen. And that night, you'd check back and you'd record whether you hit progressed or missed your daily actions. Now doing that alone often reveals after several days and weeks these trends and patterns of what you like to do and what you like to avoid and it's so enlightening and you can't escape the data even if you're not like a data freak. That way you can start to break the pattern by getting an accountability partner or setting a different goal or figuring out whether your values are actually aligned with what you're setting which is something that Josh and I found we'd put these goals in all these intentions, and we kept missing them. And I was like, well, clearly this is just not a priority or it's just something we can't stand to do or we're just putting it off because we are procrastinating or being lazy or it's hard work and we haven't scheduled it. Like anything in life worth doing, you need to always remain curious as to why you do some things easily and put other things off. And then you put them off again and again and again. You need to ask better questions to make sure that you're digging into these patterns, behaviors, and habits so that you can continually be working on being your best self. Because in my opinion, and it is just my opinion, but I think it's held by many other people and hopefully you, there's no better way to show up in this world than being the best version of yourself. Then you're going to get the most out of life. So my question to you now is what do you intend to do next? let me know. I'd love for you to come across to this episode, nataliesisson.com forward slash 005. I've put the show notes in there, links to like the Insights Timer app, 
and you can read the full blog post there of what I've talked about here on this episode to make it easy for you. And if you want to take it further and you know you can't quite do this by yourself and you know that January wasn't quite living up to your expectations, the goals and resolutions that you set, then come join Josh and I for our 10-day Life Pilot Challenge. It starts on February 1st. You can head to lifepilot.co for all the details. And if you decide to join us, I'm going to give you a special for listening in to this podcast because that's why I get to do this. No advertising. I get to advertise my own stuff. So if you put in the code untapped, it's going to give you 20% off. It's going to be available for three days from the time that you listen into this podcast. Maybe longer if you're lucky, but probably just three days. And this is my way of testing whether you're listening to the podcast and whether this is of interest to you. We freaking love LifePilot, but we're biased because we created it. It has transformed our lives and we actually use it every single day. But on that page at lifepilot.co, there are tons of testimonials from people who genuinely love it too. And every single time we jump on our members lounge call, which happens twice a month, with people who have gone beyond LifePilot and they just want accountability and community and support and coaching, they're constantly telling us why they love LifePilot. And it's like every time we do those calls, it makes me so, I don't know, I get a little bit emotional because they don't need to tell us that, but they genuinely are so thrilled in the ways in which they're seeing it work for them and how they've incorporated it into their life and their families and their relationships and their work and their career. So lifepilot.co, if you're up for joining us, we're starting on February 1st. You can take it self-paced, but you can also join us live. And I just really love to see if this makes a huge difference in your 2019. So don't forget to use the code untapped for 20% off because I'm feeling generous and I want you to change your life for the better this year and untap your potential. Thank you so much for listening in. If you liked this podcast episode, if you loved it even better, please, can you actually do me a favor and just share it with your friend? Can you just say, hey, go to nataliesisson.com forward slash 005 and just check this lady out or tell them to just go find Untapped on iTunes with Natalie. And that would be a really amazing favor that I really appreciate you doing. Here's to you living up to your potential.